space. Okay. Oh my yes. Got Slayla in here signing the wall. Oh, this signature is terrible. I need to work on this. What's in my bag? I'm Slayla the Purpose. And this feels like spaceships. <laughs> I feel This ain't Paris, but I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel for you. Like big deal, no need to get in my feels for you. You call my eye, no London. Welcome, welcome to the What's In My Bag podcast. It is me, your host, Louis B. I am joined by the gang, 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 I don't want to hurt myself today. That shit hurt. It oh, hurt already. Hurt. Oh, it no. hurt already. I love that. I'm um, old. Jade, speak to him, my guy. Hey, man, y'all already know what the fuck going on, man. <laughs> it's your boy, we in that motherfucker, man. Sorry, you speak to him, my gal. What's up? What's up? Special, special guest, first time offender. I'm not even going to lie, man. This person right here is making me, you know, we've done this shit 184 times right now, but every now and then I get a little nervous. I ain't going to lie. Like, I'm feeling it in my system. Like, my, yes. it's like, it's like, like, damn. I'm going to walk in on some shit. I'm going uh, <laughs> to let her introduce herself, just like I do for all of my first time offenders. Go ahead for it. 
Hello. Wait. Uh-oh. Is this up high enough for me? It should be. That's hello, up. hello, hello. Hey, everybody. I'm Slayla The Purpose. I'm from mm. Atlanta, and I'm happy to be here. Hey, I like it. I like it a lot. Episode 184. Is the food good, man? You all right? I brought right. done with you it. You demolished that shit. Nobody. You killed it. We wouldn't know. Let me make sure this is good. I mean, hey, I'm, I'm letting you know. It's good for you. I'm going to choke on it, but still survive. Thank you, thank you. Of course, of course. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, yeah, man, every now and then you get some people in here that make you a little nervous. And she brought it to my attention. I didn't even think about it. I'm just feeling the feelings. And she made sense of what the feelings were. Oh, man, you got to fix that for me. If you what? <laughs> shit going crazy. They, they can't see. Oh. They can't see the, the, the part of the production. You know, it's, it's crazy. I don't know why. I don't, <laughs> I don't see shit. Don't All right, it. so... Um, I know her. You said, "Damn, when, when, how old were you when we met?" I want to say I was like twelve or thirteen. Jesus Christ! I think I was thirteen. That means I was fifteen. Like, wow. Yeah. So we, <laughs> our past yeah. is interesting. Um, what? <laughs> we know each other from church. Yes, we used to sing together in the praise team and stuff like that. Shout and out New Harmony. Yeah, shout out New Harmony, man. I got to get all y'all in here. <laughs> Shouts out to y'all, but. We were singing, you know, singing our little Jesus songs. Okay. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yep. And we, you know, we developed a relationship through that. So it's really interesting to see, like, now I'm, I'm damn near about to be 28 in January. So it's just interesting to see how time moves, how people grow in the time that mm -hmm. continues to move because the shit just does not stop. Um I'm I'm honored to have you here. Thank you for coming. Like I, I'm honored to be here. I'm I, a fan. Like I get really excited when the people that I fuck with really heavy want to come here because it's mm -hmm. a lot of times it be a, it be the niggas closest to you that be like, I see you, boy, and that's <laughs> it. Like I see that's you real. with no action behind it. And like boy, fuck that's you, real. huh? I'm like boy, fuck you. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, Kayla, Slayla. I'm so sorry. I ain't calling you Kayla. It's okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? We, we in a whole new realm right now. Right. We're in you a weird. whole new realm right now that I ain't gonna lie to you. I've been waiting for you to get in this bag. Listen. I've been waiting for you to get in this bag. We're gonna get to it in a second. But just like I like to start all of my podcasts off, instead of asking y'all the same mundane shit, all the other podcasters be asking, mm -hmm. how you doing? How was your week? I try to brand all of that into what's in my bag. So, Jade, what's in your bag? Hey man, same shit, different day. Hey, you're not holding like, the mic right now. Nah, uh uh, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? You, you see, you see I, I literally see all the there, feedback right there. But when I'm editing, it sounds crazy, man. How much you want to bet? Cause you, mm -mm. That, that's it right there. That's home. That's home. That's it right there. You be like this, bro. Like, be killing this I shit, man. What's in your bag? Hey man, same shit, different day, man. You know what I'm saying? Light shit. You know what I'm saying? Packing light. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I like it. You know what I'm Sorry, I can't you. complain. What's in your bag? How you feeling? Man, bag is light, man. Bag is light. Um, everything's just normal. Everything's going back to normal. The Let coast is clear. Thank God. Weird niggas have gotten out of here. Uh oh. At least for now. Right. Niggas for are now. weird. Niggas, <laughs> niggas are weird. I fuck. say that all the time. And bitches is weird too. Yeah. Weird. Talk that shit. <laughs> Slayla, the purpose. What's in your bag? What's in my bag? Should be pretty heavy right now. Is it? In a good way. Right. Listen. <laughs> um, my projects in my bag. My singles in my bag. It came out yesterday. I like it. So mm -hmm. the bag, uh, right now I'm, I feel like I'm really giving like bag lady, you know. Okay. Bag lady vibes. Cause like you All said, right. it's it's pretty heavy right now. It's a lot of a lot of shit. Can I guess? Yes, okay. of course. There's a lot of shit on the way, so yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. even we come from the church, we gotta ask questions like that. I you, make sure you my nigga, man. You you up in my, you up in my house today? We lit, man. <laughs> um, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. What's in my bag? My bag is pretty light, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. Life is life is decent right now. Like I said last episode, I think it's all about. She, when you're getting older figuring out how to balance everything mm -hmm. like with 24 hours in a day just trying to figure out how to get everything in the day make every not to make everybody happy but make sure that everybody is is pleased with you and shit make sure that you please with yourself at the end of the day that's a very difficult thing to do because some people may I'm worried now some people may try to make other people happy in a day and forget about themselves or some people may just worry about themselves and then forget everybody else and it's like you have to make everything balance in life and that is the scariest yet most beautiful part of all of this shit so that's real 
My bag is light, man. I, I'm just enjoying trying to figure out how to balance all of this shit. It's a very <sighs> invigorating experience. Yeah, it is. Exactly. Are you more self than others or more for others than self? You say what? Are you more self than for others or for others than self? I'm feeling myself changing, man. Mm -hmm. I feel like most of my life has been self. Only child syndrome, you know what I'm saying? We do that <laughs> shit. But I, I say all the time, through doing shit like this, I'm learning about it being so much more about others than myself. Like, I come in here and every week I'm trying, if it's not just us, I'm trying to figure out who can I bring in here mm -hmm. that people need to hear from? Who can I bring in here that people need to see? What talents do people need to see? What giftings do people need to see? And shit, I ain't got all them gifts. I don't have all them talents y'all niggas do. So we gonna get y'all in here. It's about y'all. So yeah, man, it's, it's definitely changed right before my eyes. What about y'all? Me. <laughs> he said me and that's me. it. I ain't changing that shit, nigga. <laughs> like, cause that's the thing. Like growing up, like it was about it was about others type shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I always worried about goddamn like if I reacted a certain way, like people like going like look at me like like man, nah, fuck that. Either you get what you get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you take take what you get. You know I don't, I don't give a fuck at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm a grown ass man. Fuck you talking about. <sighs> Oh, I thought you was about to say something. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, man. This is a house divided right here. You know what I'm saying? You know, as I get older, it, the more I try really to, I don't cross. really, huh? It's yeah. really crisscross. It ain't even really divided. It's really, you got <laughs> angles. Yeah. It's like a battle of the high schools in here. And I, I say this because I feel like, I ain't gonna lie, man. I feel like high school, I did like most of the shit that kind of groomed me into who I was. When I got to college, I was commuting. I really didn't give a shit about being there. So I treated mm -hmm. it like that. So, Shit, right in here we got two folks from Tri Cities, Slayla and Jade, and we got myself and Sadia. You know West Lake's finest all day. <laughs> I hate to see it, and it's so funny. Every time I love my West Lake fam. Whenever y'all come in here, I appreciate y'all, but I have such a different level of appreciation for all of the Tri Cities fam. Like I, I, I love y'all as if I went there because, <laughs> huh? I know you did not. Just say that I say this every time. This is nothing new. I should have went Wait, to that school. Did y'all see the build up in that for the Westlake? Oh man! Yeah. He said, "Yo, we Westlake, but fuck them niggas." Now I am outnumbered. Nah, but yeah. I say this every time. Like every time I see y'all, when I used to go to the school, even like to do shit for the orchestra, and I just see the other niggas that's in the arts programs. I'm just like, damn, I made the wrong choice. But she I can't tell my mom that because she uprooted everything to she move over there. To try, huh? Should have came. Yeah, man. It was just different <laughs> things that just made the shit fine. Y'all also had the best principal that ever oh, yeah. existed. That nigga was fucking like, amazing. Shout out to Dr. Damn. Sams at this point. Man, that nigga and is I, amazing. I honestly hate that. That, that man is amazing. Let me take that back. He's that superintendent. That man, man is amazing. Okay. At a whole different county Period. doing different shit. I don't even know where Bibb County is. And I, I'm going to just throw this out there. Dr. Sims, wherever you are, um, I hope it doesn't like infringe upon the professionality of your new job. Come but on, I would love to interview you. Like I feel like when, when we talk about people that have been mm -hmm. pivotal in somebody's life, That's right. I have never had some Somebody that I would consider my principal mm -hmm. until I had Dr. Sims and that was for three years in middle school but the impact that he had in my life I was like man like you are a one of a kind dude sure. and that's crazy man. you didn't even go one to that school kind. like huh that's it that's crazy you yeah, didn't even go to that crazy. school but I went to Paul D. West so I got the experience oh, from there. okay then, okay okay oh I, I kind of left that out but I went to Paul D. West so I experienced him then which he was a phenomenal <laughs> principal and then after that so it's like you know what I'm saying he's always been my principal even after that like fuck For all sure. these other niggas that then tried to principal me <laughs> but anyway let's get into the artist for the day Slayla the Purpose yes sir like I said earlier, I am so thrilled that you are finally, I don't want to say finally, that sounds bad. I don't like the context of that word. I am thrilled that you are now deciding to move, as your name states, in your purpose. Mm -hmm. It's terrifying, honestly. Talk to me about that. Why? I don't know. It's just, uh, I don't know. I'm a very, like, quiet, well, not quiet. I'm a little introverted, mm -hmm. and I, like like to keep parts of me to myself and to the people that I care about and mm -hmm. that I want to know like who I am mm. so with music it's like you gotta be vulnerable mm -hmm. and you gotta be authentic and it's like ugh, I feel so exposed you know mm -hmm. especially like I feel like once you hear the music like once you hear the project it'll make sense because I'm just talking about a lot of things 
you know, a lot of my life experiences, trauma, breakups, Mm -hmm. relationships, all type of stuff. So it's like, ugh, like people in my business. It's Mm. weird. I don't know. And then it's like also a lot of pressure. Cause like Tri Cities, hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, right. I mean, but then again, but I feel as if like when it like when it comes to stuff like that, it's all it, it just goes with the same thing of like just giving people, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? What they like, you know what I'm saying? What what you want to give them? Right. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like you only you only showing as much as you wanna you wanna give off type of shit or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now like a little bit now and the, to an extent you're gonna have to be a little bit more. <laughs> Out there, mm-hmm. or you know what I'm saying, show a little bit more personality, but it just still goes with the same, same concept. Of like, look, bro, y'all gonna have to, you know, just take what I give y'all. You know what I'm saying? saying? Like, I would say this is so cap. This is all cap because it's so funny. I, I feel like I I know how you act, and it's so not introverted. You know, what's it's funny? so not. I'm to an myself. introverted extrovert. It's so funny. But That's you real. spent you've known me since I was a kid, right? You know what I'm saying. So she said I'm as different a kid, now. You know what I'm saying. Because <laughs> as a kid, I was probably like yeah. off the chain. But like mm. now, I don't know. I feel like life just happened, mm. and I became like a little bit more reserved. But mm. I don't know. I don't know. I would say I'm an introvert extrovert. So do you feel like you ever come out your shell shell? When it comes to music, just... I'm not shy. Okay. Well, I'm really not shy. So it's, it's just, like the alter ego. Is yes. I was going to ask precisely. you, like, if you kind of more like laid back or kind of like um, to yourself, how do you feel like you're going to adjust to people like the the ones who talk about the Summer Walkers and be like, oh, you know, you asked for this fame or you knew what came with it. So I can you tell you, she's not going to have that problem. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you now with her no, background, no, no. she's not going to have that problem. I don't have social anxiety. Like okay. I can be extroverted when I need to be. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know. I know how to turn it on and off. Okay. Yeah. So So that having a theater background from Tri Cities, I guess tell me about how that kind of bled into who you should are becoming. Um, you know, Tri Cities and Jade can vouch for me. <laughs> they gonna mold you. <laughs> yes, like um Tri Cities was I appreciate Tri Cities so much because I feel like it really made me just like into who I am, like mm-hmm. just today. I feel like I got my thick skin from Tri Cities. Like I ain't never had nobody talk to me it's so crazy and just so yeah. off the wall. Then like my <laughs> instructors, like they just they really broke us down and then built us right back mm. up. Mm. And so for that, like I felt like my whole life I could handle a whole bunch of no's and like not feel mm. insecure about myself or like not talented or yeah. whatever. They just I don't know, they just instilled in us something that is very like rare. To come by, um, as far as my theater background, I really strayed away from theater, but um, it's still like a passion. Yeah. I, I wouldn't like in the future be opposed to doing like plays or musicals and shit like that. When I got to college, I did. Um, I was a theater major, then I ended up changing my major to mm-hmm. English because I really wanted to lean into like writing because I just I've been writing my whole life, so I wanted to lean more into that and give theater a break. So we'll see, like how it goes. What I can say <clears throat> in response to theater, as far as like my ideas for like uh, visuals for like my songs or like anything visual um, or like artistic that I have to put together, I really lean into my theater bag. Yeah, that does, that, that, that does why not? amplify. Yeah, yeah. it amplifies <laughs> it for sure. I'm like, it needs to be animated. It needs to be vibrant. It mm. needs to be, you know. Oh, so, yeah. That's how that, that's how that connects. So I want to ask you the tough question. What was like that snap? What was that light bulb moment that that kind of set the fire in taking music seriously? Because you were saying earlier pressure. Mm. And I ain't going to lie to you, you know, from a distance. I feel like I was one of those pressures. Even though I never told you. I was I, In my mind this whole time, since I've known you, I've always in my mind have been like, how the fuck is she not a recording artist? <laughs> what is she doing? Nobody's quite singing like this. What I'm is she doing? Screaming. So, I guess kind of talk about that pressure and and kind of what led to you saying, you know, let's let's go for it. You know, I feel like people see things in you that you don't always mm-hmm. like Most see, definitely. and you're not the first person to tell me that. Like, mm-hmm. I've had people that's known me as long as you that said the same thing. Like, why are you not going? Why are you not? And to be honest, I just never saw myself like doing it what did you see for yourself i don't know you know i was gonna go to law school yeah i was gonna be a um i, I can't i can't, I can't <laughs> I even guess. imagine that like i was gonna I be guess. a lawyer i was gonna be a lawyer i was really into 
I don't know. I feel like when you're like when you can do a lot of things, mm-hmm. it's hard to really figure out like yeah. what one thing you want to do. And I used to feel like I had to choose. And now mm-hmm. I don't give a fuck. Like now I'm just like, I do whatever I want to do. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. And so like, I used to want to be like an activist. Like I wanted to be like, um, like an entertainment lawyer. At one point I was thinking about doing like being a civil rights lawyer. Slay with justice. Yeah, for sure. Interesting. I like that. <laughs> Slay for justice. This nigga with his names, bro. Like, <laughs> quick on the feet, man. He's a talent. Y'all smart. Y'all better trade more. He's a talent. Trade, He's a talent. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I was going to be a lawyer. Um, and then I was offered a position working for one of the largest political organizations in the world. Mm-hmm. I left Atlanta, moved to New York for two years. You and sure did. Wow. Yeah. You sure lived did. in New York for two years, was doing like nonprofit political work. And I hated it. I was like, this cannot be my life. Like, you hated the job or you hated the city? Both. Ugh. New York yeah. is disgusting. It's definitely been? It's a, it's a little, it's so, New York is disgusting. Get in there for a few days, eat you some Thank food, get out. Get out of there. Think so fucking bad. <laughs> There's no the privacy. You got to spend about $50 no to go from New York to Jersey. No this is crazy. I hate Wait, it. No, I, had time I, I never York. heard that shit a day in my life. <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I had a great time. What? Here, but you I know what? What? No this squirrels. is real life. There's right. no squirrels. Y'all ain't no. got no squirrels. No, I've never heard that shit. Like, it was I was dead in my fucking life, it. bro. It's, it's, not, it's not a happiness feeling. They, like, no. they like the squirrels. No, you, know what, you know what made that moment so funny to it's me? I went on vacation with my, with my lady because she's from New York, right? Mm-hmm. So we went out there and we went to this little nightclub. Everybody in there dancing. It's like one of the little Spanish clubs. So everybody's a little vibe. The shit you would probably see on TV. No I go over to the bar to get something to drink. I'm happy as fuck. I'm just like, man, I'm not in Atlanta right now. Life is good. Yeah, baby. I look at some old OG right next to me. He said, yo, you here on vacation? I said, yeah, man. He said, that's what's up. I fucking hate this place. <laughs> <laughs> he said, we all on fucking top of each other. I can't wait to get the fuck out of here. That's real. I said, damn. That's oh, real. Oh, bro. That's that shit real. is real. No, bro. No, that shit is crazy. No that shit is crazy. Dark, that shit is crazy. Got a dark There's no there, privacy. Bro. It's like, I hated it. Like, Nah, I love what? I love New York as far as the fun. Tourism, oh, yeah. I could never stay there. Hell fun. no. I think that shit is Stay the funniest like thing I've ever heard about it. But it ain't got no squirrels. It's B. no squirrels. It ain't got no squirrels. <laughs> it doesn't, <laughs> have, it doesn't have happiness, bro. It's no, not, it's, it's like everybody happy. is Come like on. it's Gotham City every day, nigga. No, I get no. I get why people are like, you know, like so antsy yeah. because mm. it's like the vibe is just so fast paced. Get out of my like, way. Yeah, you everyone's rude. Quick. There's no hospitality. Yeah. You know me, my southern self. God forbid you ask what the- time it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> but I didn't experience the rudeness. Really? I didn't. I didn't. People were saying excuse me to me and oh, I was no. bad. I wasn't saying excuse me. Niggas were saying excuse me to me and I'm like. Hmm. It was wild. It was. It's a wild place. <laughs> Literally. Literally. What do they call it? Concrete jungle or some shit uh-huh. for sure. I had a great time though. Yeah, I feel like I to like time. to visit to touring visit. Yeah, is great. great, but to live and then yeah, it's like no. really expensive. My rent was three bands. My rent was three yeah, bands. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm crying. Like, like fuck that. It was Jeez. wild. I could not wait to move back to Atlanta. I was and then the pandemic happens. So I was like, yeah, I'm going home. So. Oh, so you was out there when the pandemic happened? Yeah, like when it okay. first broke out, it was crazy. Like everybody, like when they were showing on the news, like trucks of like bodies, it was like by my house. It was crazy. Dang. It was crazy. Wild time. <sighs> and my my um, best friend slash roommate, uh, her mom, God rest her soul, she uh, called us and was like, y'all need to get y'all ass home now. Mm. We booked the flight so damn fast and got back. Well, my best friend's from uh, Florida, so she went to Florida. I came back home, and then next time I went to New York was to move out. I was like, mm. fuck that. And I was still paying rent, but I wasn't there. I don't care. The wildest thing about that whole shit, like, during COVID, was when, like, they had sprayed down the whole subways. I thought oh, yeah. that I thought <laughs> that shit was so <laughs> fucking was funny, funny, bro. I said, nah, bro. Y'all this niggas is, is the wild. Place like, to be that, right first of all, that shit been long <laughs> overdue, overdue, nigga. It's <laughs> like, the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> right. The Y'all niggas, right. Bro, I never right. seen some, right. I never seen niggas spray down some shit so big. Come on, y'all okay. know what's up. Niggas was That's still safe. musty during the pandemic. <laughs> Niggas was just washing their hands. Let's not get it twisted. New York, <laughs> New York is a different place, but really, but oh, um, God. but yeah, uh, was in New York, hated it. Like the routine, uh. New York, I hated New York, and I hated the job. I, you know, when you just mm. feel so out of place, like yeah, I just yeah. felt so out of place. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. I don't know where I'm supposed to be, 
but I know it's not here. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, "Mm, let me just start back writing again. I had stopped writing like for a while um, after my mom passed because, you know, like music and like anything that was arts was like our bond. Like we shared that. So when I lost my mom, you know, I really felt like I lost a part of myself and I just did not want to do anything pertaining to me. That's literally one of the reasons I switched my major. I, I didn't want to do nothing art, like nothing. Like I was just all academic. Can I talk to you right quick? Because yeah. I don't know if I ever really, we never really had a conversation about mm-hmm. it. Because when it comes to situations like that, I kind of. Yeah. <sighs> I, feel like. I remember that day mm-hmm. when we all got the message. And I would, that, that that's some shit that rocked me because she, your mom was in the choir too. Mm-hmm. She was singing with us as well. I was. <laughs> and I had no idea like it's just it's just it, it's like one of those testaments to everybody has to make sure that their health is in order because at any given moment this organism can shut down and you just never know so getting that news was heartbreaking for me because not trying to be funny I think that that's that could possibly be like the greatest loss you could you could suffer yeah for sure Especially during that time because I was going to go to college. No, I was in college. Yeah. I was in college. So when it happened, I was literally taking my finals. And she was supposed to be coming to pick me up. And then they they told me. And I was just like. And the first thing I said, I was like, where's my sister? Because my sister was five. I was like, where's my sister? I got to get home. Yeah. And um, somebody from the church, actually, that worked for Delta, booked me a flight. I got on a fast flight. Took a 30-minute flight from Nashville to home. The funeral, she died on like a Monday or Tuesday. The funeral was Saturday. Like, it was very quick. Yeah. Just take some time to big her up because mm-hmm. I, I know that she means so much to you. I can see from everything that you do that she is literally still moving within you. Every sure. move that you make, every step that you take, I see her in you. And it's, I see her in your daughter too. It's so interesting daughter. to see her grow. Not, not your daughter. I'm tripping. Your sister. <laughs> Look, I ain't got no kids. I ain't got no kids. So but sorry. no, it feels like that. It though. feels like real that. shit. Like it feels seeing like seeing her that. grow up. It feels like that. And I'm like, oh my god. She was so young. She's five. Yeah. I was like, fuck. I'm gonna have to go to fucking Spelman. Like, ugh. But no, my my stepdad was like, no, you're going back to TSU. You're finishing. And I was like, okay. So, <laughs> you know, life's hard. Yeah. So really taking this music seriously. Can you please actually? Uh, I'm not trying to be funny, but can you pronounce the name of this single? Rumpelstiltskin. Say that one more time. Rumble stilt skin, guys. Rumble stilt skin. Okay. You don't know Rumble how to pronounce skin. Can you tell me what <laughs> you that never heard, You never read that book? You never read the Grimm Brothers? It's like a fable or some shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I never not. read I'm their so story? Sorry. I haven't. I'm the only one that ain't. You, damn. Okay, Uncultured swan. I've seen Shrek. Well, the Rumpelstiltskin. Oh. Rumpelstiltskin tricked him. Yeah. Oh. Out of something. Like, Shrek was hating his life as a dad. Yeah, he tricked him out of his life. Oh, that wow. was probably the best one too. It oh, was God. good. It was oh, damn. It was so good. Okay, it's making it's sense it, yeah. now. So, shit, we we we, we finally got a song out, and I definitely want to say congratulations on your release. I I'm, I'm happy you. to say that whenever someone comes in here and they're uh, promoting their shit, so congratulations on your release. You. Uh, the hardest part about making this song, nothing. It huh. was so easy. You know, that's how, that's when you know that you're supposed to be, like, doing it. Cause it was so I'm easy. Jealous. So, I'm jealous. <laughs> long story short. <laughs> I got to dig deep. <laughs> but she was trained for this. Was yeah, trained. but, like, it's... Okay, so, long story short, the producer I work with, shout out to Raz, uh, he sent the beat. Well, he played it for me one day, and I was like, ooh, I like that. Send that to me. Mm-hmm. So he sent it to me, and I was sitting with it, but, like, I really couldn't, like, come up with anything. And then one day, I don't know, I'm weird like i be well i'm not weird but i'll be talking to myself and like like just coming up with just like weird shit in my head like sometimes things just pop up i don't know yeah we are weird yeah yeah yeah. so like one day i was just like (laughs) this ain't paris but i feel for you and i just kept saying that i was like Mm. why do i keep saying that and i was like i feel and then i remember talking to my boyfriend he was like what he was like why are you why are you he was like i don't get it this ain't paris but i was like like the eiffel tower like eiffel oh shit (laughs) <laughs> so I was like, no, because when you first said it, I, I was, th- I was literally talking to the 
was like, what are you saying? And I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know. I just keep saying, this ain't Paris, but I feel. And I was like, Eiffel. I love that shit. I was like, the Eiffel Tower, like the Eiffel Tower. He was like, oh. So that then, nigga thought you he was probably annoyed like, why does she keep talking about I feel weird. I feel he's, like, he's so fuck? used to my weird shit he just talking like, about speaking in haikus and shit like, was, <laughs> I don't know I just kept saying it I kept saying it so then I like I wrote like the first verse and then I wrote a little bit of like the bridge or like the pre-chorus or whatever mm-hmm. and I went to the studio that night and I was like hey y'all I got this idea so when I first said it everybody was like okay and so basically I kind of created like the framework for it and the other writers I work with, Cole Love, shout out to Cole Love, shout out to Ebony Strong. Shout out to her. Shout out to Ebony. We go way back. Another new Harmony Another alone. new Harmony member. I love you guys. That's my girl. She's also an artist. Check out her music. Sick of ass niggas. Everywhere. Ebony Strong. But um, she, we, I just started saying it. I went in there, laid it, and then he, uh, Cole Love came back with the hook. Ebony came in. She's like, I got this. She's like, I got this slay. I want you to say this slay. So I was like, okay. And it just kind of came together. So then we were all high as fuck. And our engineer was like, uh, she was like, I'm finna bounce this down to y'all. Shout out to Kim. She's like, I'm finna uh, bounce this down to y'all. What y'all name in the record? And we all like, we don't fucking know. And Cole Love goes, Rumpelstiltskin. And we all just fall out laughing. Wait, so did he have a reason for it? Like, did it go with we the song? We were got it. high as got it. fuck. <laughs> like, got we it. were high. And he was like, Rumpelstiltskin. <laughs> and we all fell out laughing. And so when it came down to like putting out a single, I was like, damn, like, should I change the name of the song? I was like, nah, fuck that. I was like, that moment was so so organic. We got to keep it as Rumpelstiltskin. Mm-hmm. And then later on, like, I kind of was able to connect the real story of Rumpelstiltskin to like the song and like what I'm talking about, like niggas reneging and niggas changing their mind on you and being a trickster and making, you know what I'm saying? Like I was able to make connections and I was like, that shit was like alignment. Like I couldn't name it nothing else but Rumpelstiltskin. That shit is funny as hell. <laughs> that is funny as hell. I love the breakdown of like certain, I wanted because to Because I would have never, I would have never like, yeah. I would have, I would, cause you know, you know what would be funny and right. then and like, Shit, shit like this be having like in like English classes and mm-hmm. all this other type of shit like when people like be trying to break down like you know stories or mm-hmm. whatever and shit like that and, and try to find like a deeper meaning and shit yeah.